I'm Scott Mansell and welcome to Driver 61's University Series. In today's tutorial we're taking a look at the advanced driving technique of trail braking. So what exactly is trail braking? Well trail braking is the gradual release of brake pressure as the driver enters or turns into a corner. It's not the typical race school technique of braking in a straight line, coming off the brakes and then turning into the corner. Rather, it's braking, yes, at the maximum grip available in a straight line, then coming off the brakes gradually as we begin to turn into the corner. And it allows us to use more of the tyre's grip as we're entering the corner. We're not just stopping the car, coming off the brakes and then turning in. We're blending this braking and turning into the corner and hopefully using 100% of the tyre's grip as we enter into the apex. It also enables us to be able to manipulate the balance, the difference in grip between the front and the rear of the car as we enter the corner, thereby also using as much of the tyres grip on all four corners as we possibly can. So how do we trail brake and what's the order of the processes that we'll put through the pedals in the car? Well, if we take a look at these two diagrams to my right here, the first one shows a typical racing line through a left-hand corner and we have the various phases as we enter and exit the corner. So the green part of the line here shows that we're flat out coming up to the next corner. The red part here shows maximum force through the brakes while we're in a straight line. Now the orange part here is the part where we're trail braking, the part where we're just beginning to release the brakes and begin to turn the car into the corner. Now in this phase, we're gradually releasing the brake pressure as we're coming in towards the apex and increasing the steering angle. And the magic to getting trail braking right is to get this blend perfect so we're always using all of the grip available across all four tyres. Now if you look at the second diagram here to my right, we can see the brake pressure with the red and orange line here against steering angle with the blue line. So as you can see, we're arriving up to the corner, we're braking up to 100% of the grip available, which is this area on the corner diagram. We're then decelerating as quickly as we can. We're beginning to release the brake pressure, initially quite quickly. And then this section here where the line is orange is where we're trail braking. And we're releasing the pressure here quite gently. You notice that we're down to maybe 10, 15, 20% here. And then we're holding the, the pedal at quite a light pressure just to manage the weight transfer of the car as we're beginning to steer the car in towards the apex. So you can see here that the steering angle on the blue line actually crosses over with the brake trace here. So as we're releasing that pressure off the brakes, we're beginning to turn the car in. Once we're completely off the brakes, then we're at the maximum turning force for the car, which is this blue section here. And because we're not having to decelerate anymore in this area, we can use all of the tyres grip for turning rather than deceleration. So why does trail braking make a driver quicker? Well, it's because they're using more of the available grip more of the time. A good driver will be able to blend that braking and the turning phase of the entry into the corner and use more of the grip available. We've already spoken about this in our grip tutorial earlier in the series, so if you want to head back and take a look at that, then please do, and it will help you to understand these grip circle diagrams here. So these grip circle diagrams actually show the potential grip in, on the outer ring here that's available from all the four tyres in acceleration, braking, turning left and turning right. So this first diagram shows the grip usage for an amateur driver. So in the middle here, they're arriving at a corner at a constant speed, not using any of the tyres grip for deceleration, acceleration or turning. Then they get on the brakes and maybe they'll use 80 or 90% of the grip available under braking. They'll release the brakes quite early, have a pause and then turn the car into the corner. And that's this phase here where they're, where they're coming off the brakes, coming in towards the apex. And as you can see here, the blue line shows their grip usage and it's nowhere near 
the maximum grip available, which is around the outside here. Then the driver will get the car into the corner and they'll be using, again, 80 or 90% of the grip ava available laterally to turn the car, okay? And then it's the same on the exit of the corner. They're not using all of the acceleration grip because they're not blending the acceleration as well as they could do with the turning, but we won't, won't need to go into that today. If you look at the professional's uh, use, usage of grip, you'll see that again, they arrive at the corner without any acceleration or deceleration or turning. They get on the brakes and use 100% of the brakes, um, of the grip available in a straight line. So they'll arrive at the corner on the brakes using all of the grip available to slow the car down. Then they'll begin to come off the brakes, but increase or begin to increase the steering angle. So the grip that they've got here that's being used for deceleration, as they come off the brakes, the grip has been transferred to turn the car laterally. And the grip is then continually being used as the driver is coming off the brake pedal, coming off, coming off, coming off, coming off, and gradually loading the car up laterally until we get just before the apex here where we're completely off the brakes and using all of the tyres grip to turn the car into the corner. Now, one issue that a lot of amateur drivers generally have is that they'll overslow the car going into a corner. Now, if we take a look at this next diagram here, the blue line shows a speed trace against distance for an amateur driver, and the red line is the trace of a professional driver. What you'll find with a lot of um, amateur drivers is that they'll overslow the car in this phase and almost go too deep into the into the corner before they then just come off the brakes sharply and turn the car into the corner whereas the professionals trace they'll decelerate at the same rate while they're in a straight line as the amateur however then they'll begin to come off the brakes gently as they turn the car into the corner and this is why you see this little gap between the speed traces here because the professional driver is coming off the brakes more smoothly and able to use all of the grip of the car. Therefore, they gain quite a significant time advantage on the way to the apex at the corner entry. So one of the main reasons for trail braking into a corner is actually so that a driver can manipulate the weight transfer and the, the balance of the car as you're entering the corner. Now we've spoken about this already in our weight transfer tutorial, so again, if you want to head back and have a look at that, then it might help you to understand this section a little bit more. So you imagine a car's coming into the corner, the driver gets on the brakes, the nose dives, the rear comes up just a little bit, we transfer a lot of the car's weight to the front of the car, and therefore we transfer a lot of the grip to the front of the car. Now, as you're turning the car into the corner, because you your foot's still on the brake when you're trail braking, you can control the pitch of the car. And essentially, you can control how much weight and how much grip is either at the front or at the rear of the car. And therefore, you can control the balance as you enter into the corner. So if you're driving on track and you have a slight setup issue where maybe you've got too much grip at the front or too much grip at the rear, you can adapt your driving style to change the balance of the car as you enter the corner and hopefully even out and get a better balance throughout all four tires as you're entering. So for example, um, if you're understeering into uh, the apex of a corner, then you need to think that, well, actually what I need to do is transfer some more grip to the front of the car. So what do we need to do with that? Well, actually what we need to do is to trail the brakes further into the corner so we keep the nose of the car down a little bit longer and keep more of the weight and more of the grip over the front of the car, therefore giving us a, a more well distributed grip throughout the car and meaning that we can enter the, car, enter the corner a little bit faster. Now on the other side of things, if you have oversteer as you enter the corner, so you're braking, you're beginning to release the brakes, but the rear feels light as you're turning into the corner. Well, what we actually need to do there is to transfer some of the grip and the weight to the rear of the car. So what we should do is actually begin to release 
the brakes a little bit earlier as we're turning the car into the corner. So the front pops up just a little bit, transfers some of that weight to the rear of the car, gives us a better balance and allows us to take more speed into the corner. So when should we trail brake when we're driving on track? Well, the first thing to say is it's not necessary to do it on every single corner and it depends on the setup of your car. If you've already got an oversteery car on turning, so you go to turn the car and the car feels light at the rear, you'll actually want to trail brake less or maybe not even at all because you want to transfer some of the grip to the rear of the car as I've just mentioned. Um, trail braking is more useful in the slower speed corners because you want to get the cars to rotate as we spoke about in the last oversteer tutorial you want to get the car to rotate or just oversteer slightly just before the apex to get the car turned directed towards the exit and get on the throttle as soon as we possibly can so it's better to use it in these slower corners where you your trail braking keep more of the grip towards the front of the car get the rear to oversteer just a little bit and then maximize your exit out of the corner in quicker corners we don't tend to trail brake as much. Um, what we actually want to do in the quicker corners is come off the brakes relatively early so we transfer some of that grip to the rear of the car, get back to a balanced throttle again so we sit the rear of the car down and then we can drive the car through the corner. Okay, that's it for today's tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please share it with your social media and I'll see you next time.